Affordable EMTBs, always a subject you guys are asking us about. Well, on today's show, we've got a couple of bangers. And can Rich get up the step? Hello, Stephen. Welcome to the EMBN Show, boy. Rich, it's a pleasure to get into the house of pain. Uh, now, we're going to get on to Rich's step challenge Ooh. in a minute. But first of all, some news. And the news is that Norco have got a new lightweight fluid VLT. It's got the Bosch Performance Line SX motor, yep. which, as you might know, is 600 watts peak, but only if you do 120 RPM. Otherwise, it's uh, I think it gives you... 400 watts peak at 70 to 80 RPM. 400 watt hour battery, uh, 130 mil rear, 140 mil front. Uh, multiple build options. Do you know what I really about, like about Norco, Rich? Go on. Is the size specific chain stays on their bike. And also the fact that they were actually one of the pioneers of the big battery. They did a oh, really? 900 watt hour battery, no. I think three years ago, yeah. That's so, a big battery, even by nowadays standards still. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Norco are at it. I mean, Greg Minar riding World Cup downhill. E-bike life. E-bike life. So the weights of these bikes uh, start around the 18 kilo mark. Uh, they're mixed wheel size. A couple of the angles here for you. Head tube mm. angle 65, head, sorry, um, seat tube angle 76 to 77. And price is, well, $5,999 up to $11,000. Yes. Now, we did promise you some affordable e-mountain bikes. <laughs> How about this? The Static e-shred. And this is from a family-run business up in Lancashire. Um, two models, the Shred E-R and the Shred E-Race. Um, the Shred E is 5495 You're going to tell me off now for saying affordable at 5000 yeah. <laughs> I don't even need to say anything. Look. I don't even need to say anything. Do you know Steve. what? It's true, isn't it? Five thousand is still a lot of money, isn't it? It's a hefty chunk of cash. Well, that. I got something else coming after this. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so maybe we've gone from high, middle to low in terms of the price. Right? Right, we'll get there. Anyway, the shred, the static shred, right? Six hundred thirty watt hour Shimano EP eight to one yeah. motor on it. One hundred sixty mil travel. Twenty nine er. Twenty nine er. Or you've got the E Race, which is one hundred seventy mil travel up front. Yeah. Which brings me on to affordability. Oh, God. <laughs> it's a, I it's think, a subject. I think this, I think this could be, now I'm, I'm not endorsing this bike, this is just the new section. I think this could be the real deal. Yeah. It's just to get you the price so far, it's $2,699. It weighs in at 24 kilos. 708 watt hour battery. It comes with an Aventon mid drive, 36 volt, 250 watts. 750 watts peak power, right? That's, yeah. That's, that's, that's tasty. That's almost up there with my legs. <laughs> 100 newton meter motor. Uh, three, mod, three modes of assist. I think this is, a I know it's not a full suspension bike, yes. but as, a, as an introduction bike, well, that's, I think that, that's in the affordable bracket. And I think, I think that is, you're right now, I think that, that price is the affordability entry. There are obviously far cheaper e-bikes, I thrashed one round, didn't I? It was, it was dreadful, it fell to pieces. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is a different league to that. 100%, and that's what I mean. If you want a, a, an affordable bike getting into it that's gonna last, and we, we said we're not endorsed by these but at but all, but we actually, think, we think, we think it's We think it's there. I think, yeah, it's up we there, isn't it? it's there. Yeah, uh, yeah. Now, good, tidy package, that though. Yeah, now talking about tidy packages. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> We've got this idea, maybe you guys should send in your very own video bike checks. Now, oh. they need to be about a minute long. Uh, we caught up with uh, Steve and Rachel recently at uh, the Forest of Dean. Let's kick things off and see what Steve's got with his bike. Hi, I'm Steve, and this is the Green Beast. Well, it's a specialized turbo levo comp alloy, whatever you want to call it. Uh, this is my second e-bike. I had a 2016 high bike all mountain, which I bought in 2017 second hand. Great bike, but never learned to use it properly. With this, it's more robust. 99% of the time, I'm in eco mode. So uh, Mr. N. Donahue, learn a lesson. Get into eco mode a bit more often when you do those trails and you'll get your heart rate up and burn some calories off. Uh, Componentry is great, the bike does what it says in the tin, it's solid, it feels secure, it feels planted. The only gripe I've got about it is the dreadful tires that Specialized insists you have with their bike. 
but once they're worn down, I'll get something a bit better. Apart from that, it's a brain bite. For the team, we can't wait for our next sighting up there. Cheers. Not bad, right? Tidy set up that. Uh, so we've got Rachel coming next week. Yep. Uh, Steve obviously talked about his, his Levo. Yeah, yeah. Uh, talked about the Don as well in that video. The Don. But, but folks, if you've got an e-mounted bike, if you've got a new one or old one, and you're happy with what you've got, please send in your video. Uh, be careful with the sound quality on it, so get maybe a bit closer. Send them in, and we'll get you on the EMBN show to well to see what bikes you've got. And to send them in, the link is in the, up, uh, the uploader. Hang on, Steve. The uploader link is in the description down below. That's exactly what I meant to say. Excellent. I'm really looking forward to what the viewers uh, show us in terms of yeah. their e-mounted bikes, yeah. what, what features they like, what upgrades they've got on their e-mounted bikes. I really it's like cool. to see things. Less stock, the better. I like to see actually how people have customised their bikes. So I'm, I'm Absolutely. For that. So any customization, please talk about Bonus it. Points. Yeah, fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, talk about talking about what I'm looking forward to. <laughs> uh, me and Rich actually went to the Forest of Dean recently, mm. which is in the, I guess, in the centre of the UK, isn't it? No. <laughs> South of the Where UK. Where did you teach geography? Wales, in, in, wasn't it? In university. Uh, anyway. <laughs> uh, sorry. <laughs> anyhow, um, the guys... So the, anyhow, the forestry have just opened up a new black graded challenge run in the FOD. And the challenge was for Rich. And he go, how did he get on? Pretty well. Uh, huh? I, yeah, I did. Yeah, so this is... It's a, it's a climbing specific e-bike trail, right? It is. Which as far as I know, certainly here in the UK, is one of the first places, trail centres, to actually do that. Yeah. I don't think many other places have have, have done any e-bike yeah. specific climbs, right? But Rich had to take his mountain bike up I there. took a normal <laughs> bike up. You <laughs> challenged or, or, me. Or he attempted to. So this is what happened, folks. Steve Paddock is very much the gaffer here in uh, the Forest of Dean. Uh, Steve, I mean, something very close to my heart, a proper e-bike climbing challenge. It is a black. But what's been the catalyst for you guys, you know, opening this, this climb up? What, other than you bugging me every week about it? <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, you only have to come down on a, on a weekend and it is over 50% e-bikes. Really? And we're constantly getting asked for, you know, some kind of like challenging climbs around here as well. We get a lot of people riding the downhill trails the wrong way around. So that kind of shows that that's what people are wanting to do now. So yeah. we thought we'd get ahead of the curve. Try and put something in that people yeah. can actually challenge I mean, themselves on. This could actually be the first black graded technical climb in the country, right? Could be. Hopefully, we're going to see an extension to this trail in the future, Absolutely. which I think would be amazing. If it gets ridden. Yeah. So, yeah. so the, I guess the message is get yourselves onto the black graded climb here in Pedal Bike Way and uh, yeah, give it a crack. Rich Payne has just <laughs> entered stage left. I have to say, if he does this on his mountain bike, I will wear a T-shirt which says, Richard is the best and my favorite presenter, which I think anyway, so it's not a problem. <laughs> but I would like to see Rich get up this climb. Now, if any of you get up this climb on a mountain bike, then you will be straight to the wall of fame in the cafe with that wonderful James Coffey. <laughs> oh no, here we go. Whoa! That's hard. Oh. Whoa! Oh. <laughs> that was so close. <laughs> power, just power. Whoa. I got it. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dude, it's a really wet day. The difficult thing with a climb on routes is that uh, an e-bike will spin, so it's about momentum. It's about kind of getting over the route rather than have power down on it. So really technical, really difficult. Oh, that's yeah. good, that's good. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh God. Nice! Oh, oh, oh. Yes! Easy the ass. first ever, <laughs> the first ever clean of the black graded climb the pedal bike way. Viv Jones!
yeah, massive thanks to Steve and the Dean Trail volunteers for their work on that trail. Yeah. It got, like I said, guys, in the video, get yourselves down there and try to attempt that challenge. It's is tricky. That, is that the future, Rich? You know, you know we, we talked about, we did a ride recently. Mm. You know, when you've got an extended technical climb, even on a full power EMTB, it is, it's a, it's a oh, real it's challenge. Yeah, it? and it's, it's, it's one of the things I think an e-bike, power irrelevant, is excels at, right? I, yeah. think, I think that's what, what's really fun, is tackling a tough it's, climb. So. It's, it's, it's almost a different sport, isn't it? Yeah, too right, yeah. You know, yeah, like the power stages. Uh, so guys, get yourselves down to the Forest of Dean. Okay, Steve, on location, this is a, a sort of a new thing we're starting to bring mm. in, and it's about various locations dotted all over the world, which we've been very fortunate enough to go to. We have. Now, I, I want to talk to you about one. Well, actually, can I talk to you first? Go, go on, then. I've always wanted to know this, because you did the white ribbon, didn't you? Uh, yes. <laughs> would you take an e-mountain bike up there? Yeah, I probably would, yeah. Okay, right. Yeah, give it a whirl. Any other great locations? I mean, you've been everywhere. Any other great locations you think would be a really cool e-mountain bike oh, challenge? Oh, do you know what? I haven't been as many on an e-bike, but now looking back, I would like to do more exploring stuff. So the stuff I did with Tito Tomasi on the oh. Kona. More oh, damn, of course you went on that trip. Yes, <laughs> yeah. but like that big mountain exploring wow, stuff. Wow, that was I, amazing, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, exactly. That you know, was up by the glaciers, amazing. all sorts. So that, that, yeah, I guess we're lucky. We have been to some incredible places on the yeah. channel. But uh, I, I want to zone in on Jacob's Ladder. Now, we're going to kick things off. This is, this, is the, this is the video I did with Hans Ray a couple of years ago. Now, Jacob's Ladder is located in the Peak District. and This, it, this actually is in the centre of the UK. Yes, exactly. Yeah, about 300 mile north. <laughs> Uh, it's a climb. It's an amazing climb. It's actually yeah. a bridal way climb. So you guys can get up there. You can give it a go. Can you clean it though? I mean, it's super technical at the bottom, and it gets like increasingly tacky. Of course, so as you get more fatigued and tired, yeah. your line choice becomes to waver, and then it becomes more steppy. And there's a real sting in the tail. Have you so ever seen that? No, I haven't. And I haven't. But so was it? Was it harder than you were expecting? It or was because the bridal. Way, I mean, right? Han, I mean, Hans Ray is the master of trials, right? And he said, "Oh, we've got to go and do this. We've got to go and get this one done." And I was like, oh, I can't get this. this is one of the best trials riders ever. And he's yeah. taking, me up, taking me up a stream bed in Derbyshire. <laughs> so I was quite nervous, but um, we did do it. And it was okay. a lot harder than I was thought. Was it? Okay. Like, is the kick in the tail. Like, when you're really tired, you know, when you're in the kind of I'm red burning. zone. When you're burning, you're in the red zone, you can have a bit like this. Yeah, but jelly arms. It's a great place. But, I mean, it was amazing to ride it with Hans, I presume. Yeah, but I, I think I think that whole area. If you guys are looking for, you know, cool places to go, you know, we talk about cool places on on the show every week. So, from my point of view, it, it is a great location to get to. Not just because of Jacob's Ladder, but the surrounding countryside. There's loads of bridleways there. Fantastic views. Tidy pints in some of the pubs around. There's some <sighs> yes, nice please. beer around there. Uh, How long did it take to get up it? <laughs> Oh crikey! I, crikey, was it like six minutes? I think. Okay. It was. Oh, I was. Expe I didn't. I wasn't sure what to expect actually. Because was I, it six or was it? Ten, uh, do you know? Do you know? What? I can't remember. It was more than six, less than twenty. <laughs> yeah. We'll call it that. <laughs> Something like that. Uh, yeah. I think is you can take the good thing about Jacob's ladder is you can actually take your time with it because you can. There, there are moments where you can take a breather, but of course the challenge is to do it in one. You can't yeah. stop. Try to do it in one, and. Uh, yeah, it's it's technical, but it's, it's, right. it's a good one. And last but not least, I want to give sort of the viewers a bit of a, a more of a, an EMBN insight. So, when it comes to filming something like that, explain how the cameramen were actually <laughs> like because did I they can't just, you just did sprung, sprung me that one? Yeah, well, look, I mean, uh, you know, right. and they've probably seen a few of our cameramen on camera, but you know, was it poor old Louis running behind you? How was it? It is difficult. Drone work. It is, it is difficult. Yeah, because you know what? When we're going, imagine a. Because on uh, GMBN, I'm yeah. just on GMBN. If I was to climb something like that, it'd be probably very difficult. But they could literally walk alongside. It'd be nice and simple. Not quite like that. Exactly. I mean, we yeah, we could probably talk about it. Like on an e mountain bike climb, because because like you did on the step in the Forest yeah. of Dean, it's about momentum, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, one hundred percent. But if you've got that step times step 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 times step forty, yeah. Then, yeah, the filmers actually, you know, and, and Leo will tell you as well. Is if you if you're on a gimbal, say you've got a dirty wet gully riverbed you know it might be yorkshire it might be wales or scotland the film has actually got to run up that riverbed yeah. 
at the same speed, when it might be kind of slippery and greasy and there might be dead sheep in there, have you? That's true. I'm, I'm being truthful here. Yeah. Uh, it's really difficult. All the while keeping an eye on the screen to exactly. make sure that you're in screen, yeah, you know, it, it in is. focus, and that they're not going to trip over a sheep. It is incredibly difficult. So in that situation, you know, it's a very popular area. So we had to get in and, you know, get out and not kind of get in, in the way of other people as yeah. well. So on that occasion, it was... Uh, yeah, Trippy. quite challenging. But nevertheless, a great place, folks. So get yourselves up to the Peak District, district and give it a go. Yep. More on locations coming in the future, hopefully. Beautifully done, Rich. On some feedback, Rich. This is from your Taiwan video. What a trip. What a place. Weird, wonderful and wild things out there. Well, well do you know what? It was... I thought it was... It wasn't wild. It was no? Quite, no, not at all. It wasn't wild at all. It was well, quite different to what I thought. Well, let's see what the people think. So, well, I tell you what. In our first video from Taiwan, V Tech Six Fifty says or asks, here in the United here in the United States, we never get any of the brands of bikes I see in Europe. Why is that? Good question. Oh boy, that's a subject and a half. I know that. Um, well, there's lots of cool black brands out in the US. I mean, many of the mountain bike brands yep. come from there. There you know? are specialized. I think. Uh, I think he's referring sure. to sort of. Sorry, some sorts. No, no, that's fine. Carry on. More of the sort of the more obscure things more obscure. that we see. Well, it's true actually because some of the motor brands we saw out there, uh, Hyena was one. We do, you know, when we go out to, you know, the Eurobike show and Taiwan, you do see a lot of motors and batteries and and maybe bikes you don't see in other places, but. The truth of it is, is actually every time I go to a show, I will see a new bike brand. Yeah. And then I'll see that bike brand and say, that's a cool bike and it's only available in that country. Yes. There is so many of that, so many of that kind of thing going on. Um, I, the thing is VTech, I think there's, there are quite, there is quite a good choice of bikes in the US. Yeah, yeah. Totally. Uh, as you know, I was about to say, you know, Specialized GT, Merida, Canyon, YT, Norco. Norco. I mean, there's, you know, there's... Do you think, maybe the question is, are there too many brands? Well, hey, that, we've actually done a Dirt Shed show on. Oh, there you go. That's, that's for another day. Go yeah. watch the Dirt, dirt Shed, folks. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> same video, 1972. Sorry, but most of these brands I've never heard of, and at those prices, it's fire sale time. How many will be around next year? Well, an like, equally valid question. Whoa. You know, I think... The Don has asked me many times, you know, you guys have asked us that the prices of EMTVs are a little bit high, but we do continually try to show you guys some alternative bikes which are available on the market. I mean, we saw last week's show, VMG from Australia, you know, $4,000. Well, look at that hardtail we had at the start of the show. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and then finally, um, ZFit wanted to know uh, what we saw more of in Taipei. Steve Jones, did you notice more tech for e-biking and urban riding compared to EMTB? Ooh. Do you know what, on this occasion, on this occasion, uh, I think it was 50-50, to be honest. I think there was a huge amount of motor brands and batteries there was a lot of I, I would say yeah do you know what i would say probably there was more urban riding compared to emtb at that particular show but you've got a eurobike and the balance might be different because actually you've got a eurobike is a fantastic um demo area you can go and test all kinds of mountain there bike it. it's great or what? somewhere like garda rich you're coming to garda yeah i'm coming to garda soon actually mm. Rich, we're now in the bike vault. That's, isn't that your bike? That's yours. That is literally <laughs> your bike. It's actually, the author is dead. Oh. The author is dead. Wow. But it is a Canyon Strive. It's got custom wheels on it Fabian and pedals. Royal edition. And it's got custom seat collar and stem and bars. I like that we're kicking it off with a nice affordable bike there, Steve. Well, you say that, you say that, right? That's an £8,000 bike. You can actually get that bike in the underdog version. Yes, which I... Which is, which is four, I think when I looked last, it's 4,799. For an insanely yeah. great bike. Yeah, yeah. A bike. We got some stuff coming, so keep your eyes peeled. But nice or super nice? It, uh, it's nice because it's non-drive side. <laughs> oh, Sorry. Come on. No. Uh, what about nice. Ian's Enduro Sound from Country Ethan? Wow. Cool. I think the shot's a bit small, so we'd give that a nice. <laughs> I really like Doug's Polygon Colossus, Colossus in Yakima, Washington. I reckon... I reckon that's a kind of soup, but I like the ran ranchy feel about that. Should, yeah, I guess, yeah. should we get some accents going on? No, because <laughs> we offend far too many people. But okay, it's right. super nice. And last but not least is 
Uh, Ruiz, Cannondale, Matera, Neo4 in Braga. That has got to be super nice, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, that's pretty cool. That's I love super the, nice. I love the angle. I love the kind of colour coordination. That is fantastic. Uh, folks, just a quick note on the bike vault. We have had some technical issues mm. recently, so if your bike hasn't been featured, uh, rest Thanks. assured they will be at some point in the future. But yeah, just a bit of a technical error the last few weeks. Right, it is time to get social. There's some cool things happening. Like we were yesterday. Like we were yesterday. See the lower of the voice there? I like. Yeah. Do you know what? Very interesting, actually. And there is a video coming out on, e on GMBN, <laughs> GMBN very yeah. soon, which is actually Rich on a mountain bike. My XC bike. A yeah. lightweight yeah. XC race bike. And me, and me on, a, on, a, on a lightweight white E-Works 140. It's really interesting. I, and I, like I said at the beginning of the show, thanks to Rich so much for getting me to get stuck into it. Pushed you on a bit, didn't I? The heart rate, the heart rates of that. Don't give too much away, Steve. I Steve. feel like I need to. But you are, unfortunately, <laughs> going to have to venture over to GMBN to watch that one because I, <laughs> well, let's just say I pushed into a limit he's never got to before. Right. Now, talking of limits, uh, Danny so Mack pushing Danny again. Mack pushing, he, he loves it, didn't he? He's absolutely mad for it. I mean, it's... nice to see him on his Heckler SL there. Eh? Yeah, but look, it's that going backwards. Yeah, like, on the so front it's... wheel. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So it's I don't. Uh, fakey <laughs> nose manual, I think that is. That's yeah, fakey nose manual. Yeah. And what about uh, this underground? Sorry, underpass from Corbinian Engstler. Yeah. Do you like a bit of underground dirt jumping? I do. Yeah. Flip. And he's doing it on a, a ghost e-bike, lightweight e-bike. Yeah. So that's. I mean, yeah. you don't want to haul it into it, but that's cool. I like that a yeah. lot. And, and then, uh, and then, what about Marine Cabiru? Now, obviously, what's happened to your computer there, Rich? It's just oh, it's, yeah. it's gone snap. Does not Marine Cabiru, who's talking about a uh, uh, voltage. Well, wow, that's a beautiful bike. Didn't you ride that voltage? The Don actually rode that. I rode a Fuel EXE with the same TQ motor. Ah, right. Yeah, yeah. both. Very cool bikes. Cool, very cool indeed. That, that's it for this week's EMBN show. But on the channel this week, on Friday, big video, what's the best e-mountain bike motor? Cool, flipping heck. Uh, folks, don't forget to get yourselves down to Forest of Dean to try that black graded climb. See if you can clean it. No dabs. And, uh, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for joining us.